live. Hello everyone, and welcome to another WordPress Sydney Meetup Online. Thanks for joining us tonight. I know uh, your time is valuable, so we really appreciate all you guys uh, tuning in. Um, we've got the, the welcome slides running just now. So we just wanna uh, bring to your attention uh, just a few things. Um, so we're, as well as the main broadcast uh, in the evening, we're also doing um, WP Quickies. It's kind of a lunchtime quick version of this. We try and do it in 30 minutes or, or under. Um, so we do have a, a form if you guys wanna um, contribute and just suggest some topics, uh, that'd be great. Uh, let's see if we can just get that one. This one here. 
Uh, so suggest a, a lunchtime uh, quickie topic. Uh, fill out the form there, or you can scan that QR code there. Um, and I'll put these back on um, after the, the meetup tonight as well. Other things, um, we've got some pictures of hosts. So I'm here, Will Brown. Um, James Carden is going to be one of the other hosts. We're actually joined by Mitch as well. Uh, I'm just going to unmute them. Um, hey, Will. Hey, hey Mitch. Guys. How are you? How are you doing? Hey, guys. It's good to be all three of us together. Oh, you guys are all on mute. No, we can. Hold on. No, I think we're OK. We're we OK. OK. Yeah. I'm going to put everyone on screen just now, and let's get rid of this presentation. OK, there we go. Hey, guys. Um, so we've got the other organizers here, James uh, and Mitch as well. Mitch has been hosting the WordPress Parramatta uh, physical meetup. I guess we're going to call it a physical meetup. Um, guys, do you want to introduce yourselves and just say um, who you are um, and what you do in the WordPress area? Uh, James, do you want to go first? Sure. Hi, uh, my name is James Carmody. Um, I run a company called Creative Compass where we do SEO and web design. Um, and I'm very active in the meetup world and running WordCamps as well as Will. Um, so that's a bit of fun. Mitch, over to you. Uh, cool. Well, first of all, how are you going, guys? It's been a while since we've... Uh, <laughs> it has been a while. <laughs> it's been for me, but it's been a while since there's been some form of normality coming back from this whole epidemic. Um, anyway, my name's Mitch, and you may have seen me um, at the Parramatta meetup, if you've ever come to one of those uh, in Parramatta. They've been running for quite a few years now. Um, and I've also been involved in the last WordCamp with uh, both James and Will, um, which was a great experience. And um, I also run a WordPress design and marketing agency um, in the Western parts of Sydney. And um, yeah, it's good to it's good to be back. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. Uh, I guess you'd introduce myself. Uh, my name's Will Brown. Um, I've been helping out with the WordPress meetups for quite a few years in Sydney now. Uh, I have a background. I'm a developer, WordPress developer. So I do plugins and APIs and stuff like that. I've also got a company called WP Wingman that looks after WordPress websites, uh, WordPress site care. So you can have a look at that. Um, but just generally, I do business consulting, uh, WordPress consulting. Um, had a bit of a, a downturn. I guess we've all had a downturn at the beginning of the year because of this epidemic. Um, yeah. But things are starting to pick up a little bit in the industry, um, I think. And I start to see some people looking for, for some more jobs, um, which is, is always good. And so thanks, guys. Thanks for uh, tuning in. And thank you, James and Mitch, for the introductions. Um, we're we're going to start the next like, 10, 15 minutes just kind of talking about WordPress news, um, I think. Uh, James, do you want to kick that one off? I've got some links from sure. you. Sure. First of all, what, what did you start in the meetup, Will? I started uh, when I first came here in 2012. Oh, OK. Well, I started yeah. in 2015. 2015. That's still, that's still a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. A long time. <laughs> when did you start, Mitch? Oh, man, I can't even remember. Will may know, because I think I approached Will at some point to start the Parramatta one. It, it would have been a while ago when City Extra was opened up in Parramatta, and that's been closed for a long time. Yeah, I don't even remember that. So it'd be at least five, six years. Yeah, 2016, 2015, yeah. 2016, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've got a, a topic. Um, I've got four of them actually. The first one is um, I don't know if did I send you the link to open up, Will? Yeah, is that the WP Tavern? Uh, the front of the okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's the link in the comments there. Um, so that one was pretty cool. It, apparently, um, they're like a front end React powered WordPress theme. Um, but there's no, like, it's just, it's a framework. But um, I thought it was interesting how Automatic gave them a million dollars to, to start up. Throw the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then leading into that, um, so for people watching at home, you can um, have a read. I thought it was really interesting. 
Um, and leading into that, there's the second one, which is the WordCamp Spain. WordCamp um, Spain. Yeah, so Matt, Matt Mullenweg um, from Automatic, the, the founder, he had some interesting things to say about page builders and, and the Gutenberg um, um, block editor. And he said that, I thought it was interesting how he said that there'd always be a pay, place for page builders. Um, if you want to, if you want to read more about it, you can go to that link. And I think there's even a little video. What do you guys think about that? Because I thought, I, th I thought their original intention was that, that like Gutenberg is going to be a page builder. Well, I still think it's supposed to be, um, but maybe they're just not stepping on anyone's toes and being careful. From Can't what I've been reading say, about the project, they, <laughs> it, it looks like they want to blockify everything. So they're they're not just going for page editing. So at some point, WordPress is all going to be made up of blocks. So the, you're going to have a, the a block, a, a menu block, a mm -hmm. search block. So everything mm -hmm. will be a box. Um, so I think that's what they're looking looking towards. So rather than just be a page builder, it's going to be a site block builder. Uh, I, I, I don't think they'll ever get to a stage where it's like Divi or Elementor or Beaver. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think there'll always be like a market for for that sort of page builder type. Um, to me, yeah. Yeah, so I don't think they're going to go away anytime. In terms yeah, of well, I've, I've noticed that like some of the page builders has been talk about creating blocks for Gutenberg, yep. like within the page builder, which I thought was interesting because usually a page builder runs instead of Gutenberg. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, that's true. Interesting stuff there. Um, yeah. Now, the next one is. Sorry, Paul. Paul. Paul just says, good, I hate page builders. Every new client I trip over has some other framework in page builder. <laughs> no in WP. Yeah, it'll be good for consistency. I, I agree. And as you said, James, I think some of the page builders are going to jump on this Gutenberg bandwagon and, and start develop blocks. So there'll kind of be an, an underlying consistency. So yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Sorry, I don't want to shoot you down there. There's, there's the next uh, one that you want to talk about. Here we go. Oh, uh, yeah. So I thought this one was really interesting because, um, I mean, Automatic acquired WooCommerce quite a while ago, but they, have, they haven't really done anything major with it um, as far as I could tell. Um, but this, this seems like a, a major step. So essentially what they've done is they've made their own payment gateway and um, called WooCommerce Payments. And it's Stripe behind the scenes. Um, and it's more expensive than um, if you just went straight with Stripe. But so it lets you, pardon? Why would you do it? Well, I don't know. But it, some... what, it, what it does is it, it in, in the WordPress admin, it's got a new menu item called payments. And you can there's no login to Stripe. Everything's done from within the WordPress admin. So you can see all your Stripe payments, well, WooCommerce payments in the admin, and then mm -hmm. Um, refund and see um, mm. if it's been deposited or not, and a few different things. That's not too bad. Actually, I can see a use for that. Okay, yeah, it's only available in the US at the moment. That's maybe coming from because you know, like last year, they packaged WooCommerce as like a service. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's part of that now coming out of the service and going to to WordPress into the the WooCommerce product itself. Yeah, yeah I'm a bit worried because they keep. Adding, they keep taking WooCommerce features and putting them on Jetpack. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a Jetpack feature. Jetpack, yeah. it's everything except to wash the dishes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's too much, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this one, I thought was, I mean, you might have a bit more to say on this than um, than me will, but apparently. Um, there's been a lot of features update, feature updates for local, um, which people might know as local by Flywheel, but they've renamed it to local since WP Engine bought Flywheel. But I thought it was really interesting because they mentioned that they have 50,000 developers using local at the moment. Wow. Um, that was back in February. That's huge. Yeah, that's, that's insane. 
Um, so I think they've been hard at work trying to release new features. Um, so that was that was cool. Apparently, when the guys from Flywheel, because um, uh, for WordCamp Sydney last year, we had uh, Flywheel as one of the sponsors. And apparently, they, they were walking with their, their green local T-shirts uh, down Piermont Bridge um, on the Friday or the Saturday. And as they were walking past, apparently a couple of guys came up to them and went, oh, yeah, Flywheel, local by Flywheel. We love you guys. Like, we use it all the time. That's and cool. they were a bit blown away by that. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think that was a... Um, that was great for them. Um, I, I saw that blog article, but I've not read it yet. Um, so I know what they've done with local. They've really rebranded it. it when it in its first version, it used to be uh, like a virtual machine. Yeah. So you can pick up a virtual machine off Ubuntu or something, and it would come packaged with MariaDB and Nginx and um, PHP, all kind of bundled in. And it, it took a lot of time, a lot of resources, and some people found it. Yeah, kind of like um, WAMP and MAMP. Yeah, yeah. So what they've done now, and I haven't read too much about it, but they've, they've completely revamped it. So rather than run a, a virtual machine, it actually runs the services like Nginx and a PHP, and MySQL, and MariaDB on, on the local machine. Oh, okay. So it looks like they've now included support for Apache um, in, in that running it locally on your machine. So rather than a whole virtual machine, it's now your local services. So it should be touch with a lot a lot quicker a lot easier a lot faster to to use and spin up yeah well i found i only really started using local when last year i was um in europe and i didn't have a good internet connection and i could work on the plane and a few things like that so that's that's when i really started to use it and i've i've been using it since it's really good yeah yeah um just look at some of the comments here so susan she said that when she was attend the WP Summit. They said that Gutenberg is not at the page builder stage. Nowhere near, I don't think. Yeah, I'd Maybe agree with you. Yeah. Mitch, Mitch reckons it will be sooner, but I don't think it's going to be at the page builder stage for at least three or four or five years, maybe. No. Mitch, oh, reckons, that... Mitch reckons within a year. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon 12, 24 months. Really, that's soon. I mean, they're throwing all the resources at it. There's nothing that more. Important to that about. is true. Because um, I'm on the um the core track of notifications of the um core updates for WordPress, yep. and almost daily. Whenever there's anything that comes through, the majority of the focus is on the block on uh, Gutenberg. Yeah. Like majority of efforts are now being put into that. So because of that. That's why I'm saying that it's just, it's almost exponentially growing now. Not just a little bit. Now it's really, really ramping up. Yeah. It's really ramping up. So five years is, no, that seems just, it's just too, too long. I reckon 12, 24 months. Yeah, but top. So you're saying in 24 months, it will be at the stage where like Divi is now? In a different way. No, I don't think uh, it's going to be. Um, in terms of feature rich usability of any of the page builders, I think it's going to be very minimal, just like how the popular is supposed to be, nothing fancy. But I believe that it will definitely be at a stage, probably by, by version six, which we'll probably say at the start of next year. Yep. I reckon it will be header and footer and body editing. And if you can achieve that, then there's really no, yeah. Now yeah, most, most basic sites don't really need a page builder then. Yeah, yeah. Unless you want some like custom. Yeah, as, as you, layout, you can yeah. Almost replicate something else, but you probably have to do a lot more things yourself to copy what what Beaver Builder would do or what Divi would do because they've had a much longer um, time to develop. Um, yeah. But I can see a transition of developers crossing over at some point to focus on building modules and blocks for Gutenberg rather than building module blocks for Divi or Beaver Builder. Yeah, or, yeah. For example. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree, I agree. Uh, well, they've already started. Like um, the Brainstorm Force people who make um, like Elementor and Beaver Builder add-ons, they, they use, um, they've, they've already started making blocks, which is cool. 
Yeah, I, I agree with Paul's comment here. Is that most of the people you're using WordPress? They just want to publish content. They don't want to muck around with, with you know, stuff that they have to add on. You know, if they yeah. can come with core and they can build a website header, footer, everything, that's you know, that's pretty much all you need for a basic uh, website. You know, obviously, yeah, you know, business websites a little bit more, but yeah. Um, Bright blue gum. When full site editing is out in a year or so, I think I'll ditch my page builder divvy. <laughs> Maybe you can look at ditching it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I'll wait a year. Mitch, <laughs> Mitch is dying on the inside with that comment, Will. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's quite a good lead in. So, so talking, about, talking about WordPress versions, um, there's um, a link that I wrote, uh, read on WP Tavern uh, this week. And some that's coming new to 5.5, which is the, the next major version of WordPress, should be um, PHP and WordPress version checking for themes. Oh, that's cool. Which is going to be nice. So at the moment, if you install a theme or if you have a look at a theme, um, you can pretty much install it on any WordPress version and just kind of fingers crossed, pray for, pray for the best outcome. But now they're going to have a little um, WordPress works with WordPress version and works with PHP version. And that's going to allow people now to really, the developers to embrace the PHP 7 features um, and also all the new core features that are coming into WordPress as of 5.1, 2, 3, 4. Um, so that means that now when people are choosing themes, you know, if they've not got a PHP version, then they'll get a little warning sign. Yeah. Um, and if they're not got the WordPress version, they'll get a little warning saying so they can still install it. <laughs> yeah. you know, but, but it's just like red flags going off before you do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that type of code's coming off in the back of the the site checker. It'll the be good because there's a lot of, I mean, there's some good themes, but there's a lot of junk themes and plugins as well. So it'll be good to have that. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think so. I think that'd be quite a useful thing to have. Maybe another more controversial thing that's going to come in possibly 5.5 is this. So what do you guys think about automatic theme and plugging updates? Ooh. I mean, it's going to put a few people out of business, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, what it is, they're, they're testing it just now. Roughly, the interface is going to be, um, so when you look in the plugins section just now, there'll be a button towards the right-hand side that says enable per plugin. Okay. So, so it's, it's up it's to you to opt in. Yeah. I actually would enjoy that if I'm honest. So you could set some of the little plugins that you have that you know only do like one or two things. Like for example, the disable comment plugin. All that does yeah. is disable comments. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that sort of stuff you could have, you know, constant updates. Yeah, and it's it's pretty much safe to update without checking. Yeah. Maybe not so much WooCommerce. No. <laughs> or Beaver or any of the big, huge yeah. plugins. I wouldn't go auto. Well, actually, any... Beaver, Beaver, I just auto update. It's no problem. I've never had an issue with it. Yeah. But um, I mean, like, this, like, especially WooCommerce, there's just so many plugins that rely on WooCommerce that you end up having, like, 15 plugins installed for your WordPress installation, and then you have another 15 plugins just to run WooCommerce. So it's it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so Gregory's asking about what's the downsides in practice. Mitch, do you want to reel off some of the downsides of automatic plugin updates? Um, white page of death. <laughs> good call. That's, that's, that's a big one. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, Basically, you know, depending on the complexity of the plugin that you're wanting to update, especially something as big as WooCommerce. Um, the funny thing is, back in version twos of WooCommerce, it used to be really safe. I don't know why. At one point, I found that updating WooCommerce was okay. And then it got to a point where it just, I don't know, it just became very unstable. I can't remember if it was from version three or four. Or something like that but it was definitely um it became it just became very unstable and now it's one of the ones where i just don't um automatically update yeah um especially if, it, if it's a small incremental update i think it's fine 
Yeah. But if you're going major version, there's just too many factors like your theme is it compatible and your plugins that are working with WooCommerce are going to be effective as well. So, yeah, it's definitely something that you just don't do straight away. Yeah. So that's what I think are the, are the downsides, the fact that it can break your site and you need to make sure you've got a backup and can recover from it somehow. It's interesting you say that because I noticed version 2 was more unstable than it is now. Like every update, even minor updates in version 2 would just break the site where I've noticed it's becoming more and more stable um, with, with the exception of major updates. But yeah. Yeah, well, I think version, version 6 now, yeah? Just came out? No, just version 4. Oh, 4, okay. Yeah. Mitch makes a good point, though. I think it would be good to provide maybe those guys some feedback to say, I mean, how, how awesome would it be if you could update a plugin per plugin, but only for patch releases? So yeah. you, you know how a version like 1.0.0, the first one is the major update, the second one is a, a minor update, and the third one is like a security patch or a bug yeah. fix. So it'd be great if you just enable it all for like just the minor ones. Or yeah. maybe just, and then you yeah. can close the holes, no problem. And then as if you want to install new features, you can manually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, got, um, I've got something interesting to share, actually. Can we, can we do this oh, one first? <laughs> Sorry? If Gordon wants to know what lighting you're using, James. You're I'm so using a angelic. 15-year-old <laughs> Kmart desk lamp, which is pointed at the wall and bouncing back off to me. <laughs> well, I, I've, got, I've got a torch, but it doesn't really. I've got enough. Yeah. I mean, that explains <laughs> a lot. Well. <laughs> okay, uh, Mitch, do you want to share your, your thoughts? And then we'll probably kick off after that into the prezzo. So something else that... um. I'm posting it. I don't know if that's going to be. You can put that into the live channel. Yep, I'll do that now. Um, something that I've been uh, looking at as well. Have you guys heard about WP Notify project no, happening? I haven't heard it before. Yeah. So WP, this is going to be a game changer, I think, and this is something that's going to resolve a lot of problems in WordPress, especially with rogue plugins like Yoast who love to spam the dashboard with notifications. It was enough and, for me to move away from Yoast. Well, it doesn't matter. There's yeah. there, Yith plugins. Let's talk yeah. Yith. Yeah. All their plugins spam you, whether it's the license at the top, whether it's an update, whether it's uh, an upsell of some sort, or it, it doesn't matter. Have you thanked the author? Yes, no. It doesn't matter. Like all those, uh, this project is supposed to be something that once they want to push into core to remove all those notifications into a drop down bubble. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't spam the dashboard at all. So they're there, oh. but it's more of a notification panel that can be seen and hidden easily, which I think is 100% needed. Yeah. Um, that is, I think that is it's just really awesome. There's just too much going on on the dashboard at the moment. And I think they've got too much free reign to do whatever they want. Even its style design, I mean, you can see a yellow box and then as much as underneath that, you'll see a pink box and then it just keeps going. So yeah. um, if you guys want to check that out and you can keep in touch with it on that link that's now been shared, um, at the moment it's a feature project proposal, but I do know that they're working on it and it's something that they're, they're investing a bit of time in and you can you can sort of see the development progress if you guys are interested in that but this is something that i'm definitely waiting for and if a plugin comes out like maybe like what gutenberg did there might be an add-on first before it moves into core um if that somehow is going to be available and it can resolve a majority of these issues it's it's going to be something that i'll, I'll be installing like straight away yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah it really does okay yeah, that's great. That's a great, um, a great share, Mitch. I think that'd be a definitely one to watch because I, I really like the the notification on on Windows Ten, yeah. um, where it's all in the Too box much. in the corner, so you can just kind of review it whenever you like. Well, we've had that on Mac for years, Will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Mac person. Yeah. 
Okay, guys, well, thanks very much. Um, you're welcome to stick around to the end. I'm going to jump into my Prezzo just now. Um, so I'm going to mute you guys and put you off the screen, if that's all right. But uh, we'll try and get through this landing page hacks, and then we'll maybe come back for like some general Q&A afterwards. Is that all right? Sounds good. Okay, cool. All right, Sweet. let me share my screen. Uh, this one. Okay. Great. Okay, landing page hacks. Um, so this is the main main topic I wanted to chat about tonight. Um, I think I think we had um, quite a good feedback last time I, I ran something similar to this, which um, was at one of the the meetups. Um, I did some sort of uh, landing page thing. We went more into kind of psychology of landing pages. Um, so what I've done just now is I've really um, it's kind of toned it down a little bit and just to have some really, really brief hacks, some things that you can you can really implement uh, just now for your WordPress website. So we'll try and get through the presentation. And at the end, fingers crossed, I'm going to try and do like a, a live demo and uh, see if see if that works. Um, we'll, we'll see if it, it works or not. All right, you guys. And what I'll do is I'll try and answer some questions at the end. I'll scroll through all the, the questions at the end and try and answer some of those. Okay, so what will we learn about today? I've got my nine landing page hacks for you. Um, so I'll go through each of those and just tell you the, the importance of, um, of what they do and why they should be on the landing page. And then we'll cover like the three must have rows at the top of the landing page and the order that they should go in. And uh, fingers crossed, if the, the demo gods are good to us, we'll try out doing a, a demo as well to build a landing page just to let you see how easy it is in, in one of the, the page builders. Okay, so first one is uh, keep it super simple. Now, I have a lot of clients um, that have a go at doing landing pages by themselves, and then they come back to me and ask, you know, why, why is this not converting? Why are people not clicking, not buying? And for the majority, what I happen to have a look at it, um, it's just overly complex. So what I mean by keep it super simple here is to get rid of all your top navigation, um, get rid of um, the menus, get rid of a sidebar, get rid of widgets. And um, so get rid of all that distraction and just keep the page really focused on one thing. So one single action, that's what you should be having for a landing page. Um, try and avoid asking the user to do multiple things and just really focus on that one action. Keep it super simple. You want them to just do one thing, and this page, the, the whole job of this page is to get those people to do that one thing. So that's my first hack, is to keep it super simple. I keep pressing the wrong button there. There we go. So the next hack I have is, oh, where's my photo gone? Is have a kick-ass headline. There we go. Um, so here's a couple of examples of some headlines <laughs> over the years. Um, you really want to have a headline that, that, that really captures the people's imaginations. So you've really only got maybe three, four seconds um, to capture someone's attention online um, before they, have, they click away or go somewhere else. So if you're looking at really catchy headlines, um, the tabloids, they're always uh, the good ones to go. Um, so I've got a couple of examples here. One's from uh, the Roswell UFO crash in 1947. Um, so if you have a look at the, the Roswell Daily Record and all the newspapers around about them, some of the, the highlights are like really, really kind of bland and boring. And then on this day, um, RAF captured flying saucer on ranch in Roswell region. That was like that headline from that one newspaper just took over the entire news lines. It was it was the number one um, headline that everyone was talking about for, for weeks and weeks. Um, so that the power of headlines uh, is is fantastic, and the other one embedded here is is the Sun from where I'm from from the UK. It is uh, tabloid trash at its best, but um, one thing it's really good at is, is headlines. Um, and one of the biggest headlines that uh, from the Sun in the past uh, 20, 20, 30 years is uh, those uh, uh, I don't know uh, actor TV person 
uh, called uh, Freddy Star, and the headline was Freddy Star Ate My Hamster. I don't know exactly and out of the stories, but uh, the headline just dominated news for, for like weeks and weeks and weeks. So the whole idea here is um, just have a really, really good headline. Uh, make sure that it is uh, solution focused though. So you, you wanna make sure that um, you know, you're on topic with your, your landing page and your call to action and that, that it's relevant, that it's selling something, that it's giving something, it's giving a benefit um, uh, to somebody. So don't just sen sensationalize. Uh, make sure that your your title has um, has a focus for that, and it's super okay to have a subtitle. Um, some people get really fixated on just having this like major headline, and that's you know spending weeks and weeks trying to get at this awesome headline. Um, but what you can do is just put a subheadline under there um, that reinforces the point of the main headline, and that's totally awesome. And that's totally fine to do. Um, yeah, so. Tip number two is to have like a kick-ass headline for your, for your landing page. Grab that attention. And when people land on that, they immediately see that headline and they know exactly where they are and what that page is, is all about. So my next hack is uh, having a great call to action. So the whole point of a landing page is to make somebody do one thing and one thing really, really well. But it can't be lame. It needs to be an awesome call to action. So it needs to be able to benefit them somehow. Um, so, you know, if you're just having a download an ebook here or have this white paper or, you know, sign up for my newsletter for, for blog posts, yeah, that's okay, but it's not a great call to action. It's not really gonna entice somebody to go, oh, I must have that. So have a think about what you're trying to sell, your service, your product, um, and then just try and create a, a really, really good call to action, that people are, are wanting to give you their information um, to get that thing. So when you're building your call to action, you need to think about it as a command, okay? You, you wanna use um, terminologies, phrases like, fill out the form below, get quote. So you wanna tell people what to do. You don't wanna have them thinking about what they want to do, and you want to avoid using words like uh, request or ask because that's more like sound like more like a process. It's more sound like it's it's going to like require special authorization or you know you've got to like a jump through hoops to try and get something. Are you going to ask somebody? Ask the right person. So avoid those types of words. Use command words. Fill out below. Get. Um, do this, and you want to maybe try and. Um, put some um, um, personalization in there. So for example, a button, a call to action, get quote. That's good, that's a command. That's telling somebody what to do. An even better one would be get your quote. And that personalizes it for you. And you might even wanna introduce some sense of urgency. And a lot of landing pages uh, do this, a lot of call to actions uh, do this. And um, the so rather than just get your quote, you can say get your quote today or get your quote now. But if you're going to do that, if you're going to bring in this sense of urgency, then please make sure that um, you can actually fulfill that promise. There's nothing worse than going onto a landing page, getting a quote now, and then nothing comes through in the email because it's Friday afternoon and there's nobody there until Monday morning. So if you're going to introduce a sense of urgency, just make sure you have the capability to fulfill that um, straight away. Another hack here is to use empathy. So you need to have a section that shows that you understand and that you connect with the problem, issue, or situation that the people are there on that landing page for. So make sure um, you, your emphasis on, is on the reader um, and not on yourself, but you wanna connect with them. You wanna make them um, see that you understand the problem, um, that, that you know their pain, their issues, and you know, so you can create that connection with them. So you definitely want to use the word you more than the word I, because it's meant to be about them. So use um, phrases such as, I understand how you feel, um, or like you, I also suffered from. So you want to create that emotional, that empathy, um, that when they're there and they read that section, that they know that you now understand their problem, their issues. Um, so it's really important um, that you have that empathy section there, because that, that's the real connection that they can understand that you are 
an expert, you understand their situation, their problem, and that will help them engage and that will help them um, build some trust and keep them on, on your landing page to, to read more. Also as well is uh, something that's really important for a landing page and um, is a step process. So this has been proven to increase uh, conversions in your landing page. If you can show people how they can get your thing or how it's gonna work. Um, so what you wanna do is like a, a really simple step process, maybe two steps or three steps. Um, I would generally avoid doing five, six, seven or, or eight steps because that's just really complicated. And that can actually have a negative effect of people thinking that's just too difficult, I'm just gonna go somewhere else. So a two-step process, three-step process, maybe a four-step, um, but just keep it really, really simple. And what you're trying to do is um, you, you're trying to show the person just how easy it is um, to get the thing that they want or how easy it is to um, get the solution if they then use your, your, your product. And by showing that step product, it gives them the confidence to know that if they complete the action on that landing page, here's what they expect next here's what's going to happen um, so i see this this part fail quite a lot on a lot of client websites they just don't have the step process and people are, are just left wondering well if i commit if i do this action what's going to happen next so tell them tell them exactly what's going to happen fill out this form um, read your email get the download something something like that so so definitely try and think about a, a simple step process that you can include in your landing pages and that will really build trust and engagement and really push those people to understand what's going to happen next. Um, and again, that will, is going to increase your conversions. Top three benefits. Again, guys, this is really super important thing to include in, in your landing page. So think about what you're selling. It could be a product. It could be a, a service. Um, just think about the top three things that's going to benefit somebody who's going to buy that or use that product or service now the um the conversion rate has been shown um to really dramatically increase if you can tell them you know exactly how it's going to benefit them what's what's it going to make their life better how's it going to um, um increase their sales um how it's going to make their life happier um so having the benefits section there is is really really advantageous and again i see this this section dropped on a lot of um, landing pages. And just by including this, it can really, really, really help you guys, help your landing pages sell and convert. Now, benefits in general, we're talking about benefits to, to the customer, to the reader, not benefits to yourself. Um, of course, if people buy your stuff, you're gonna get more money. Try, try and avoid doing things like that. You're gonna come across as a, a, a bit of an idiot if you're talking about all your benefits from people buying it. Um, what we're talking about is benefits for, for the end user, the end reader. And benefits, well, they're, they're generally um, comes into the category of, of physical, um, financial, so making more money, um, spiritual, so having an easier life, an easier time, a better lifestyle, or emotional, um, so you're, you're, you're feeling healthier, you're, 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 your brain's working better, all that sort of stuff. So physical, spiritual, emotional and financial are usually like the four main benefit categories. So when you're sitting down to do your landing page and you come to this section, just have a think about how your solution benefits the person to, to buy it, to use it um, in contact, in context of those four, um, those four types of, of benefits there, those four categories. How it works video. Um, Video is super good at converting. Um, it's probably one of the, the top conversion things um, that you can have on, on your site just now. Um, people will, when they land, have a landing page with just text and, and images, um, they'll tend to, to scroll up and down uh, really, really quickly, jump in between the sections. If they have a video, then more often than not, when you look at the hotspots and, and things from the, the video data, they, they will sit and watch that. Okay, they will consume that video. If there's a video on the page, they're more likely to scroll down and stop at that video first and watch that video before they then go up and down and have a look at the, the, the details um, of your, your landing page. 
So definitely I think about including a video. It doesn't need to be a master production, um, <laughs> white like this one here, not. Um, just needs to be a really simple uh, video. You can do it at your desktop with your computer and a webcam. Have a, have a decent microphone, because when video is concerned, um, audio is king. People can forgive a, a, a dodgy looking video and quality wise, but as long as the, the audio is crisp, um, then that's fine. Um, these types of videos, um, they should be probably about one to two minute long. Um, you just want enough information to explain what it is, um, like how it works, um, what it does, or how somebody gets it. So you, you don't want a full feature film on there, just really sharp, um, um, to the point, how do I get this? How does it work? How is this going to benefit you? Uh, and again, these videos have been shown to increase conversion up to like 80% for a landing page, just, just having a video on there. So definitely well worthwhile including a video on there. The next tip I have for you, I think this might be the last one, is um, optimizing for mobile. And I know it sounds silly, and I know everyone goes, oh yeah, everyone um, optimizes for mobile. Well, you know, not so much. I've seen some really dodgy landing pages when I, I go to a client's site and then I bring it up on my um, my Samsung S6, which hasn't got the best resolution. And you know, the, the main page title takes up the entire width of the screen. And you're like, well, you know, <laughs> no, because more people are browsing on mobile, if that sort of thing comes up, then, you know, people are just off next. So when you're doing your landing pages, um, make sure that you're having a look at them on the mobile. Make sure that you're, you're getting that top of form, um, above the fold content for that. You're getting your heading, and you're getting your call to action that's above the fold um, for the, the phones in portrait mode and also for tablets as well. Don't forget the, the, the tablets because yeah, there's a lot of people sitting at home. Um, you know, they don't want to boot up their desktop machine. Maybe don't have their laptops, just grab a, a tablet that's uh, on the coffee table and you know they'll, they'll go browsing and stuff so uh, really super important to make sure that your landing pages uh, work for for mobile they're optimized and um, so as well as content as well as visually and um, make sure that things work like uh, buttons make sure they're, they're big enough and wide enough for someone to to uh, tap on and links as well if you're looking for people to to go out to to somewhere or to scroll down up and down the page make sure that link is big enough um, for people of, like me who have like fat, fat thumbs, <laughs> make sure you can click on them and they're spaced, um, a, you know, a good, um, a good distance apart so you're not like trying to click or select one link that's right close to, to another. Um, so definitely mobile, um, super, super um, important. Um, another tip for mobile, especially for the phones, is just to make sure that your, your contact details, your phone number, um, will, will actually dial the number when they click on it. Or if there's an address, it'll bring up Google Maps or whatever Apple product it has. And just those little interactions, those little tweaks, just make it easier for someone to get in contact with you straight away. And that's what landing pages are, are all about. It's making that person do that call to action, that one action really quickly, really easily without any distraction. So if there's a, a phone button there and they press a the phone button and it calls you, fantastic. If they're having to cut and paste, they're having to use the selection tool and slide the number, which never works, and then copy it and then go into the dial and press paste and nah, forget it. And they're not going to be bothered. They're going to go on to, to somebody else. So those are my top nine hacks for um, for landing pages. There's a lot more stuff that you should put in a landing page, but I'm going to save that for another um, broadcast at another time. Um, yeah, so th I think those are the, the nine most important ones to have in there. Uh, and of course, at this stage, when I, I talk about landing pages and all the sort of things we've got there, people usually ask, you know, well, what order do you need to put these um, these sections in? So here I'm a, are my must-have three rows uh, and their order. So the first one absolutely must be the heading. So the headline is the most super important thing to have on there. You can complement that with an image, and that works really, really well. If you have an image alongside your headline, the image um, can describe and, and um, um, reinforce the point in the headline, then definitely use that. Not multiple images, 
please no no um carousels on on this top page no no video either in this top section because people will get distracted um you just want an image um and the headline or just the headline on its own to tell people exactly where they are where they've arrived on and what to expect for that and, uh, and super definitely you can put that subtitle underneath just to reinforce that connection between the picture um the headline and, and the subtitle to make people understand this is where they are they know where they are they know where they've come from and they know what to expect on on that page the second block after that um i'm oh, sorry that that first block there the heading um the image and the, the subtitle that absolutely must be above the fold on desktop and tablet i know it's more difficult to do that on mobile because you're squishing things down but um yeah it definitely must be above the fold and uh, so they can see all, all these things uh, in here um call to action as well uh, in that one heading section so you've got your title your image your maybe your subtitle and then right underneath that's the thing that you want them to do on on that landing page so um get a quote fill out the form before um, um connect to my calendar to book a consultancy that sort of thing so um headline image subtitle and call to action all that stuff must be above above the headline don't let them scroll um, to try and find that call to action so the second section uh, empathy um, so this is the once they've got the headline they're kind of interested to scroll down empathy this is the weird part where you want to um, you, you want to connect with them emotionally you understand their problem you understand why it pains them why they've got this debt why they've got this health problem how they've got themselves into a situation so this is the emotional connection that's going to lead them to then know that you understand the problem and they're a bit you know you know uh, inquisitive now as to, as to what what you have for them what's the solution is and then the next section bang this is where you want to say after your empathy after i understand you know your pain your your situation here's what you get by doing this action on this page here are the benefits you will get um you know if you purchase this thing if you buy the solution if you sign up for this um, and again focus those benefits on financial physical spiritual and emotional um, so guys those are the top three rows and in the order um, so you got your headline first so they know exactly where they are the empathy and um, that they can understand that you know their problem and then bang these are the benefits you're going to get by doing this thing on this page right now and then you can of course reinforce that with all the other sections underneath the landing page but i think and i find that these three um, sections are like the best performing um, for for my landing pages and for my my clients landing pages let's just take a couple of questions just now before we get into this um let's see uh, lauren yes um i'll make the slides available absolutely but this this is all recorded so you can go back and, and watch the video um at any time uh, once we're finished uh, Joey, a video is a double-edged sword. You need to look pleasant, like a couple. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I agree. I mean, don't don't wear your scruffy t-shirt and be unshaved or anything like that. Try and try and make um, some sort of appearance. Um, but you don't have to. You don't have to be on person. Um, if you're on um, as a, a person looking at it, you do get a better emotional connection with your audience. But you you can just you can just super just do a video um, that's just like that. You know, just slides backwards and forwards. Um, or you can do um, like a whiteboard video um, or any, any sort of thing like that that's, that's going to show your points. It's only one or two minutes long. Um, so, yeah, so even if you're uncomfortable being on video, there's, there's other ways that you can do that type of video and still get that across and um, without having to put yourself um, on, on the page there. Uh, let's see. Disclaimer, Paul, the motion picture producer. You don't do much IT web stuff. Great. Oh, thanks for joining in, Paul. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. Um, so I'm gonna try and bring up a local WordPress website and let's see if we can try and build a landing page live. Uh, let me just try and get this um, working. Oh, right. And then once I try and get this website up, I'll try and share that on screen for you. Is it going to work? 
I had it working earlier. Oh, it looks like it might work. Um, okay, uh, WP admin. I'll just log into the back end here. It is a bit slow because I'm running an awful lot of stuff on this computer just now, poor old thing. I did build it in 2010, so it's getting a bit old now. Come on, buddy, just bear with me a little while. If we can't do this, that's okay. We'll just jump to questions. It was just like a an extra value add there. Let me just see. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'll just stop sharing that just now, and I'll let you see what I'm doing. Uh, share that one. Hopefully, you guys can see that all right. Uh, username is that. Uh, I'm not sharing my super secret password with everyone. So you can see it's crawling along a little bit, and that's all right. Beaver Builder, Steph, yes. This is gonna be Beaver Builder. Um, so Beaver and Elementor, they're both great um, plugins. Um, I just happen to like Beaver Builder. I've chosen that one, I've run with that one. So today's demonstration will be in Beaver Builder. Beaver Builder Pro, and I'll show you why it's a pro. Um, but you can do the same things with Elementor. And you know, if we're a game, if I've got enough time, I might even attempt one with, with Gutenberg as well. But you're never gonna get the same results um, from Gutenberg. So what I've got here is um, I have a, a, a local website. It's the latest version of WordPress. It's running run version uh, 5.4. I have Beaver Builder installed and I have Beaver Builder Themer installed. So you get Beaver Themer. Um, along with the plug, the plugin, you have to pay for them. What the theme allows you to do is it allows you to um, override elements such as the headers and the footers, which you can't do with just the normal Beaver Builder. It's just focused on the content in the middle of the post. So if you want to do a real true landing page, you want to control the, the header and the footer as well, then you're going to need um, Beaver Builder Themer um, or Elementor Pro, um, because I think they've got a, something similar that allows them to do the, the headlines. So let's go straight into this. So let's go to my pages. I want to create a new page called landing page. Can you guys see that okay? I'm just having a look at my other computer. Yeah, that looks all right. I'll just maybe get rid of ugly me just now so you can see that in full width. Okay, uh, all right. So this is the normal Gutenberg. I'm just going to give the page a title. So a landing page beaver. And then I'm just going to publish that. Uh, yep, that's okay. Let's publish that one there. Let's see if I can just get the resolution on that a little bit better. There we go. Uh, that's better. That looks good. Okay, so we have that page here. Um, I'm just going to have a look on that page. Um, where is it? Uh, let's a view page. So you can see the theme here. This is the Beaver Builder theme. It's nothing special. There, it's just a, a blank page, um, very, very super simple. Um, like there's no images or layout or anything. So the, the Beaver Builder themer, it just gives you this super nice uh, clean theme to, to start with. So that's the landing page that I've just created. Um, and now we'll have a look at doing the landing page properly. Now, this is the, the great thing about um, the Beaver Builder themer is that it does allow you to create this uh, the, the header and the footer. And that's what we're going to do now. So Beaver Builder, we go into Themer Layouts. Kingsley, thanks. Thanks for letting me know it looks OK. And we're going to add a new one. OK, we're going to give it a title. So we're going to say this one is a uh, page header. Uh, it's a Themer Layout, and it's a header which is good, and we're going to add that. So this is only going to work if your theme supports uh, Beaver Builder or Elementor, like headers and footers and layouts. So uh, just make sure that your theme does. So something like Astro will, will work quite nicely. Uh, so what type of header? Um, sticky, no. Overlay, no. I don't want to do that. But what I do want to do is I want to set it for uh, pages, because this is a page that I'm doing. So 
a page and then WordPress goes away and has to look at all the pages. And actually, I just want this, this layout just to be on one page, the page I just created, and then publish that. Okay, so now I've attached this, this uh, beaver theme, the header theme, to this page here, but it doesn't look any different because I've not done anything with it. So let's have a look and let's launch into Beaver Builder and build that header section um, just now. Okay, so here's Beaver loading in. It's done, a, it's done a, a default header, so there's a little bit of contact information up here. We've got a headline down there, but we, we, we don't want that. We don't want to. Actually, let's just, I'll bring myself back on camera. This is what we're going to build. I've just written out just a basic landing page, what I want to do, the structure wise. So that's what we're going to have a look at. Um, that's what we're going to try and build just now. Okay, let's get back into it. So this top stuff, phone number, social icons, no, don't want that. Off it goes. I don't want that at all. Oh, that was the other one. <laughs> we didn't want that one either. That's all right. And um, so we just want like a, a single row. We want like a really, really small logo. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this module here. Um, and I'm going to get rid of this one here as well and get rid of this one. So that's got rid of all the, the, the pre-built, um, like the, the stuff that Beaver has given you for free. And all I've got now is a row. So I want to add an image. And this is going to be my logo, my site logo. Now, it's completely OK to have a logo up there. But as long as it's small, don't take up the whole screen real estate um, with a logo. I should have dragged that, shouldn't I? There we go. Photo. So I've got some media um, that I've used before just for this example. But you can upload anything you want to do. Doom, 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 doom. OK. Have I got the logo? Oh, that used to be my logo, see? It says real logo, but now it's gone. And hence are the problems with using live demos. Let me just see if I can locate that really, really quickly. If I can't, then that's no problem. We'll just bin that. Um, I'm going to my drive system just now. I found this little logo. I don't know why it didn't come across. Maybe it's just catching up. I did all this on my laptop earlier. Um, so it's synchronizing um, with Dropbox. So maybe it just didn't, it didn't do that. That's fine. So there we go, style. I want to align it corner. So now we've got a nice logo, um, which is the same as the one we had on our layout. So now I want to do the headline. Okay, so that's the, the next big important thing um, that, that I want to do. So let's see. I'm going to bring down, um, why did you put it over there? That's fine. Bring on in two columns. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is bring in two columns. I want the picture and I want my, my headline. So modules here are going to bring a photo in. Um, so this web page we're building, it's going to be a fictitious real estate page. I want people to um, sell houses I'm using our, our service. Um, so uh, where am I? General, uh, select photo. Uh, here's a nice picture of the house. Uh, that looks good. We'll save that. Ah, man, why is it not working? OK, I think my Dropbox is not working properly. So I'm just going to re-upload those because it shouldn't take very long to do. Uh, upload files. I've got them all here. This is more realistic demonstration anyway, isn't it? Files. Living dangerously. Yes, I am. I'm doing this by the seat of my pants. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, and this was this one we want to have the the headline because we got rid of the h1 at the top the page title so now we're going to create our, our own one um how to no let's put something there. sell your house and keep all the profits that's my headline and i am going to add a subheadline or just some text, just to reinforce that point. Uh, and that just adds a little bit of uh, intrigue. 
to reinforce the headline. So um, this is a Purple Houses, which is the company. Uh, um, uh, let's see, super uh, low fix fee. Um, If you keep uh, the maximum profit from the sale of your house. Yeah, go. Cool. That sounds good. Sorry, I should have written all this down before. And that looks a bit small to me, so let's make that a little bit bigger. Uh, style, font, size. I guess this is a good demonstration of Beaver Builder as well. Um, so that looks good. And I'm going to do the same for the heading as well, just to make sure that um, it's super big. Uh, so let's just make that on two lines and keep all the profits. Okay, right, we'll, we'll save that. So I've got my, my headline, um, I've got my picture, I've got the top underneath, and I want to do a call to action here. So I'm going to drag a, drag a button down here. Uh, let's give the button a good name. Uh, I want uh, to keep more of my money. Are you going to use the iPad? Uh, I'm not going to use the iPad. You can keep the iPad downstairs. Thank Did you. you already use it? I've already used it. Thank you. That's, oh. that's my little boy. <laughs> okay, and we want this in the middle. And let's just give it some coloring, uh, background color. Uh, let's go for some sort of pink because it's called a purple. This is called purple houses. Let's do purple. Um, that's good. Color presets. Um, purple. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Save that. Okay. So now we've got the headline. We've got the call to action. Um, that's great. And let's do another section. Let's do a emotion section. Um, so let's drag a row down down here and I'm going to put a couple of columns in it and we want this uh, section to be uh, full width actually so let's just do the section uh, it's fixed we want it full width and I'm going to give it a color just to make it look nice uh, do, 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 do. colors uh, background we want a color uh, the color we now want to give it like a bluey color we're not going to spend too much time on this that looks good. Okay, so we're going to drag some content into uh, those columns there. So modules, uh, photo, we'll do photo on this side this time. Uh, general, uh, select photo, and now I know this is not going to work because the content's there, so let's me grab something in. Uh, select that, and then we'll do some text. Drag a text editor there. Okay, let's put in some stuff here. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll fact we'll do. Uh, we've heard how uh, some families. Oops. Some families uh, I get torn apart. Uh, from financial woes. Oh dear, I'm not doing very good spelling here, am I? Woes uh, are when they don't get the money they thought they would from the sale of their home. And then something like uh, uh, you want to avoid these uh, situations. Then you can just do a bullet list here that says something like uh, can't pay mortgage, um, high family tension. Um, it collectors, uh, 
knocking on the door. You really want to push that emotion there. Um, so let's give that a color. Let's get white. And we'll just uh, change its size a little bit. Thanks, guys, for staying with me. I know it's a little bit of a long-winded one, but I just wanted to show you how, how to create a landing page, like in real time. Uh, let's give it a title as well. Let's give that one a title. I want the head up there. Why is it not going up there? Okay, I'll put the heading down there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Void Void Future Family Tensions. And we'll just whack that as white as well. And save that. And let's see if it's gonna let me move that up. I don't know why it didn't let me do it. There it is. That's better. Okay, so you can see how I'm I'm building I'm building that up just now. So I've got the, the call to action. Um, I've got that one. I could do the footer, but just, just for time, I'm, I'm not going to do that just now. I might actually um, just create the the Beaver themer and then just show you what, what the default one looks like for, um, for the footer. So it's the same process that we did with the, the, the header. We just go into Beaver Builder and um, themer layouts. And I'll just let Beaver do the the default one just to show you how, how it works on the page. So again, add new. And we'll call this a uh, footer. The layout, this time I want to target the footer. Add that. Thanks, James, for picking up the comments while I'm doing this. Location. So we want this just to show them on pages. So pages, and we'll choose that specific landing page. So you don't have to do it on a pair landing page or a pair page. You can uh, do it for a category, or you can do it on particular themes as well. So you don't just have to do it on an individual page if you've got multiple landing pages there. We're going to update that. Let that save. And I'm going to refresh this page on the front end just so you can show you how, how it's working. So there we go. get rid of that as well but anyway that's the page title but you can see here how, it, how it, it's building it up so we've got a logo at the top we've got um the, the headline and the call to action right here and when we're talking about um mobile stuff as well of course you know you want to make sure that that works um really really well with mobile so we can go into the the beaver builder or elementor as well and the good thing about these guys the page builders you can't really do this so much with with Gutenberg is that you know you can have a look at the responsive editing um, oh I don't know where that went uh, responsive editing okay well that's not what I was expecting well let's just re there we go okay let's get this back let's see if it works this time preview layout it's taking its time it's thinking about it okay. so desktop tablet and mobile so you can see here that you know it's not so good on on the mobile so we could do that hopefully it'll work this time responsive editing is it going to work is it not going to work No, nope, it doesn't want to work today, but that's fine. Um, I can tell you it does normally work. Um, so it'll, it'll give you, it'll show you the the context of your your page and in mobile and tablet, and you can just go into the fonts and drag them to whatever size you need, just to make sure it fits um, really well on those different sizes. Yeah, so that's that's a real real simple um, um, example of a, a landing page. So we've gotten rid of all the page navigation at the top. We've got rid of menus, we've got our little logo there, but we've got this, this super um, headline um, and a call to action right here. Um, and then we're reinforcing it by some emotion here. And then the next one would be, we'd, we'd, um, we'd show the benefits, 
benefits here in, in the next row if we were going to do that. But we're not going to do that just now because we want to try and wrap this presentation up. Um, yeah, so let me go back to the presentation. So I'll stop that screen there. Uh, share it. And this one. Okay, so we built a super simple landing page and that what took maybe about 15 minutes just because <laughs> the problems with my computer and I'm really slow to type just, just now. But hopefully you guys can see just how simple um, it is to create a landing page with those um, those, those uh, tools. You can do it in Gutenberg. It's just a lot of extra work and you're not going to get the, um, you know, the nice kind of fluid widths and stuff. You're going to end up doing a lot of CSS and you might have to do some theme tweaking as well. So getting rid of the, the page title um, on a page in WordPress with Gutenberg, the H1, um, um, it's really difficult to do um, if you're not going to use a, a, a theme, a, a template uh, page. Um, but it's super easy if you're doing those um, page builders, Elementor and, and Beaver Builder. So that's it. That's all I have for you today. I think that's quite enough. We're coming up for quarter past um, seven already. So, so I'm going to have a look and see if there's any other um, questions on here. Looks like James has gone from the screen, and that's all right. Um, oh, he's popped back. Mitch is off just now. Uh, let's add him to the stream. There's James. Thanks, James, for, for being in the comments there. I'm just going to scroll up and see if there's any uh, questions. Happy to answer questions too. Um, let's see, Steph. Steph's always good with the questions. Oh, that was part of our conversation that we were having. Right, so he's talking about changing between um, different. Yeah. Ste Stefan was saying that um, how interesting it is that um, lightweight, how lightweight Beaver Builder looks. The Nail Elementor. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I guess, one of the reasons why I just decided to go for Beaver Builder. Yeah. And I, do, I do like their theme as well. It's super simple, really basic, really minimal. Just allows you to, to build up whatever you need rather than shove all this stuff in there at the beginning. Yeah. It's a blank canvas. All out. It's a blank <laughs> canvas. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else got any other questions? Um, please just drop them in the comments. If not, we might just wrap up tonight. So if anyone has got any um, just general WordPress questions as well, um, we're happy to field those. Um, as again, I might do a more advanced landing page one at one point to include things like psychology and maybe go into some of the other things that you can put in a landing page like um, testimonials and creditations and all, all those extra bells and whistles that, that people have. I think there was a comment right at the beginning from someone who was asking about hosting companies. Right. Hosting companies. Let's just have a quick look. Um, 6.13 p.m. Oh, wow. That's way, 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 way yeah. back. <laughs> that was an hour ago. <laughs> About SiteGround, is that the one from Steph? Uh, I think that so. One there? Um, I've, I've actually used SiteGround once. Never yep. again, though. Oh, I use SiteGround for one of my sites, and it's OK, because um, it doesn't do, really do an awful lot. Yeah. Uh, it's just like a normal website. But um, yeah, I've got my main website on, on Kinsta. Same. Uh, um, I, my other websites are on. Um, digital ocean droplets because I'm a bit of a techie person so I, I can run yeah. my own servers but, and they're cheap so I'm a cheapskate <laughs> so I would do that but I just don't have time it is fun uh, though yeah flywheel flywheel's good um, I think the support there is good they've been gobbled up by WP Engine um, but yeah. they're going to remain as a separate brand so they're going to still brand themselves as flywheel and of course if you're a developer and you've got the local um, then it's really super simple to do stuff on your local machine and just push a button and it syncs right up to your, your local um, uh, flywheel hosting. So that's definitely got the benefit from, from there. 
Um, I was talking to this guy this morning. Um, I think his name was Nick. Um, he's started a new managed company, and he's from Sydney, um, a new managed hosting company called Wordify.com. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm testing it out at the moment. It's very quick. Like, it's, it's um, just as quick as Kinster. Right. Um, but awesome. it's, it's a lot cheaper. And um, and I tested it out. I, I moved a site over this morning, and it was without caching. It was getting the same speed as Kinster with caching. All right, that sounds good. Definitely something to, to look out for. Yeah. I have a comment here from Gregory. Sorry if my munchkin's coming across. Any thoughts on WP Bakery as a builder? Um, I have many thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> many, many thoughts. <laughs> look, we, we don't want to be nasty. I mean, we're not going to be nasty. That's that's not who we are. But um, basically, WP Bakery was it was it called something before that? Visual, um, visual, visual composer. Visual composer. Yeah. Look, I mean, from my point of view, it's right at the very, very bottom of page builders. It's big. It's slow. It's got bugs. Um, it's one of these um, page builders that loads all your libraries in all the time, just in case you might use use one component. So it's yeah. really that was a big problem I had with it. Mm. Yeah. Um, you're stuck with WP Bakery as well. There's no, you, you can't get your information out of there easily. If you want to switch to something else, you'll find that your your content's all splattered with um, uh, comments and short codes and things. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah, the short code lock-in. With, which with Divi, choice, Divi still do that. Yeah, yeah. So with the choice of, Elementor and Beaver, um, I, I can't really see why anyone would, would want to do anything other than those two because they, they live you, they've got great options, they're really fast, and if you actually want to pull out and use something else, most of your content, most of the core content is still within WordPress. Of course, you're going to lose all the modules and stuff, but the actual content itself is, is still in, in WordPress, whereas the rest of these page builders, well, they're, they're kind of storing it all, all over the place. Uh, let's see if we can find another one. Davina, she sold on Beaver Builder. Good. We can get some affiliate links going there. <laughs> um, Arietta, appreciate the walkthrough. You're welcome. I look forward to the, the Psyche Geeky one. All right. Okay. Someone's looking forward to that. So maybe I should queue one up then. <laughs> Steph is, um, yep. Yep, he's agreeing with us on the WP Bakery uh, one there. Thanks for that backup, Steph. Uh, someone else looking forward to an advanced landing page. Okay, that's good. Um, here's one from Joey. When we get a visitor to sign up with a free ebook download and collect an email, do we need to specifically ask or get them to tick a box or something if you want to send them blog updates? Um, I would say yes. If you're asking them to down, provide an email just to download an ebook, then that's that's one action. If you're then going to plop that onto a newsletter and this other thing and this other thing over there, then yeah, I would make that pretty clear right near the the submit button that you're going to also plop it into all these half a dozen other things mm -hmm. and give them the option to to opt out. Well, I've actually been doing double opt-ins. Um, and I find they're more effective um, in terms of targeting people in a list or when you send out campaigns afterwards. And you for, want to for those who don't know what a double opt in. Double opt -in so, is. so, a double opt in is where you have like um, you have a tick box next to the email address, or if even if you don't have a tick box or something, you can say you know you, the headline of the email address can be. Um, Download to get my free ebook, um, and receive blog updates or something like that, or receive value in your inbox every um, every month. We promise not to spam you or something like that, and then have the email address with the sign up. Then the second part of that double opt in is then them receiving an email, and then they're only subscribing to the list if they go to the email and say yes, I want to be part of this list. And after doing that, I've noticed my spam rates drop down quite a bit. I'm not paying 
active campaign for all these. Um, well, actually, I'm using Send in Blue now. Um, I'm not paying Send in Blue for all these extra subscribers who are never ever going to buy anything anyway, just because they're spam. Yeah. Um, and the people who are in the list, they're um, very engaged with what I'm sending out. And this is not just for my stuff. I do this for client stuff as well. So yeah, I've noticed that at different industries. Uh, Steph's also saying there's also Thrive Architect. Um, yeah, is that SiteGrounds one? I think that might be SiteGrounds page builder or page origin. Page origin. Uh, similar to Elementor. Um, yep. Yeah, okay, so it's more geared towards A/B testing. I mean, there's a whole heap out there. There's Divi, of course, which is quite popular. It's it's kind of on the older side now, and it has that that lock-in um, feature as well. Was it kind of difficult to move your content over once mm -hmm. it's in Divi? There's Oxygen. So Oxygen is kind of a, a new player. It was, well, it's been around for a few years, but it's been yeah, they've been around for like three or four years now. But everyone still calls them the new. <laughs> we developed over the last year to be kind of more lightweight and responsive and stuff. So I think they've never left beta, so they're <laughs> they're always sure. rising. Yeah. Yeah. but definitely two top are Elementor and, and, and Beaver at the moment. What was another question where 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 where? And um, anyone. Is using atomic blocks comments. Do you know what atomic blocks are? Um, I've never I'm heard of that before. No. Okay. Let me. I'll Google it quickly. You, you Google it. So yeah, sorry, I've not used atomic blocks. I presume it's some Gutenberg library. Uh, that'd be my guess. Yes, it seems it is. Page building blocks for the new WordPress editor. They've got a very clean website. I give them that. Cool. Now, doing landing pages with Gutenberg is definitely possible, but as I said, um, it's really difficult to get that combination of picture with H1 title next to each other because the WordPress default theme wants to spit out as an H1 tag right at the top, and that's why it's it's useful to have Elementor and Beaver being able to target those header and footer sections to override what WordPress does. Otherwise, you're probably going to need to do some child theme development and create a, a template for yourself that overrides that. But uh, yeah, I mean, Gutenberg, it's got the columns. Um, landing pages, you don't want to go super fancy. So the example there, I had just had uh, two columns. And Gutenberg supports up to four columns. Um, so you could definitely do the majority of the layout there, um, as long as your theme kind of supported a, a full width page, page template. Um, then you could start off with that and then just build in the restrictions that allow you to get the nice bands bands across um, um, so atomic blocks is like it seems it seems like they're a theme and um, plug-in combination where instead of having instead of building the framework of a page builder they just run off um, Gutenberg right okay so well, they've got like they've got like pricing table blocks, advanced column blocks, container blocks, grid post grid blocks, call to action blocks, and all this other stuff. It actually seems pretty cool. Uh, right. I think this is what Mitch has been waiting for. Well, I was going to try to share that, but that one didn't really work. That's the wrong one. Okay. You know that? That's great. Well, thanks, Anne. We'll definitely have a have a look at that. Um. Yes, WP Engine, they bought uh, Flywheel. Uh, and Steph says he's tried auction, wasn't a fan, pretty heavy, and not many themes. Okay, we're kind of going into page builder stuff just now. So let, let's I'll leave that um, for just now and we'll just try and wrap up, I think. Um, so if you want to get in contact with us, um, we have a Slack channel. That's probably the best way to, to get in contact with us and the, the WordPress community. Um, you can join that from wpsjulia.org slash slack. Um, that will tell you the, the way to sign up so you can get into the, the Slack channel, which is wpsjulia.slack.com. Um, yeah, so if, if you visit wpsjulia.org slash slack, that will tell you the exact process to sign up because it, it's a little bit different than just signing up to a normal Slack channel because it's kind of run under, under uh, WordPress core. So within Slack, um, there's a couple of channels. Um, we have the WP Sydney channel for our community. There's also a Parramatta one that you can speak specifically to the, the Parramatta guys. And of course, you've got the general meetups um, channel in there as well, which um, they, they post links for all the different meetups that's happening from, from uh, Perth, um, Brisbane, all, all over uh, 
um, Australia. So definitely that would be, if you want to contact any of us or anyone in the community, that would be our, our preferred method is uh, Slack, because we kind of have always got a, a browser window open there. But we're also on Facebook as well, uh, so slash WP Sydney. Um, we'll post the, the slides and stuff up there um, after this. Uh, and on Twitter, if you want to get in touch with on Twitter, the hashtag is WP Sid. Um, and of course, you'll know YouTube because you're sitting there watching it just now, <laughs> which is good. Um, but definitely uh, Slack. I really encourage you guys to go on Slack, create an account, um, chat with people. You know, it's great. Um, well, I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much, James, for um, no problem. Your knowledge and chipping in with the WordPress news, and to Mitch as well, um, who's probably listening to us in the background. Really I appreciate you guys having that there. Um, if you've got any ideas for stuff you'd like to for us to cover, again, uh, just get in contact with us on Slack or Facebook, and we're happy to um, to put together like a, a big session like this on some some kind of big WordPress related topic. Um, otherwise, I'm doing the the WP quickies. Um, which is a 30-minute, um, really short um, topic for, for WordPress. I do that on Thursdays at, at 1 p.m., so 1 p.m. to 1.30. Um, so I think then, what's the next one that's coming up? Um, hosting. Hosting, yes, best web hosting for, for WordPress. For quite a few people um, submit links um, or ideas for that. So that's what I'll be covering on Thursday. Um, and again, there's a link on the meetup page for the quickie that you can suggest different WP quickies. That's it. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Thanks for coming along, for spending your time. And uh, we'll do this again next month. Do we have a topic for next month, James? I, don't think um, I think, I mean, I've been looking into it. I think we're going to try and do some sort of live demo um, over a Zoom, maybe. Um, it's going to be a little bit different, I think. Um, but I was thinking if, if we can't get Zoom to work, because it might be very expensive if I don't get my free UTS one to work, um, I can maybe we can get people to submit a website beforehand, and then we can go through and review it. Oh, All right. Like a, like a review website. Yeah. That'd be what, do cool. you think, what do you think of that? Yeah. What would it be? If, yeah. if we can't. I think it's probably a better format than yeah. like having like a open hours support type thing. Yep. So we could do like a general SEO, a general visual yep. view to it. Yep. Sounds good. I like that. Okay. You've just volunteered yourself to organize that one for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Sounds good. But I thought, you know, maybe we could, um, if, if if we have a few each, we can do one, one each or something, a couple each. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, looking forward to that. Okay, well, thank you very much. That's a wrap. We're just going to... Um, in the broadcast again that will be available on youtube once it's processed this and yeah thank you very much for all your your comments and stuff and we'll see you next month ciao perfect thanks everyone thanks will